Welcome to I Am Talkcast. My name is Ibrahim Mustafa. I'm a public speaking coach, content creator, and I give hope. Today, we have a special guest, someone who has pioneered the African unity, someone who believes that Africa needs to come under one umbrella, someone who believes in hope, and not only hope, but bringing and raising the young generations of Africans. Today, we have Mr. Yusuf. The one man thousand. Welcome, Mr. Yusuf. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm Yusuf Bilal. Um, I'm better known as Mr. Yusuf. I am from the United States of America and I'm 73 years old. I've spent most of my life in the United States, but I have traveled you know, extensively around the world because I was in the United States military uh, some years ago. Uh, what brought me to Africa was a a newscast that I saw in America maybe six years ago, I saw young African people, young people uh, trying to get to, the, to North Africa to cross the Mediterranean Sea to get to Europe for a better quality of life. And I was, I was taken aback because a lot of them would die in the Sahara Desert. You know, they would, they, they would die in the Sahara Desert, you know, for lack of water, food, etc. And those that made it to to North Africa, you know, mainly Libya, Tunisia, you know, some of them would get on boats to cross the, the Mediterranean and the boats would capsize and they would drown in the in the Mediterranean Sea. And I've also heard stories, you know, horror stories like um, some of them were sold into slavery into Libya. And uh, this is horrifying, you know, this, this, it disturbed me so much. So I said to myself, you know, what can I do you know, I'm a descendant of African slaves. You know, that's how I got to America. And, you know, what could I go to, 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 what could I say, what can I do by going to Africa to give some type of encouragement, you know, to the youth? Because I see it's the young people, you know, who are, who are leaving. And they seem to not have a sense of patriotism. They're not patriotic, you know, to this continent like they should be. So um, I'm, I'm curious to know, where is the educational system, uh, the governmental system, where it's failing in, in indoctrinating these children with a sense of patriotism? Because I, I see, you know, myself, you know, that this is what is necessary in order for us to, 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 um, to bring Africa to its greatness again, because this, this continent, you know, was once great, you know, in, in every asset, you know, every facet, this continent was very great, you know, before the colonials came. So, this is why I'm in Africa now, you know, and it's become my passion, you know, to say, to do, uh, to try to get involved, you know, with the educational systems, you know, and I plan to travel the continent to meet with the educational um, ministers and discuss with them how we can implement my booklet. I have a little booklet that I wrote called What Africa Needs. And in this booklet, it outlines details, you know, what we can do to make this continent one country, one nation. And, you know, I, I believe that if this was done, we'll solve a lot of the problems that Africa suffers, you know, overnight. You know, America is America. It has one, one voice. It, you know, it has one area code. It has one uh, currency. It has one military. And you, you see the benefits. You know, China, the same thing. You know, UK, the same thing. These countries, they have their own uh, autonomy. You know, they have their own systems of government. You know, that makes them powerful and unique, you know. So if Africa, this continent, what, were, what would unite if it becomes one nation, it would be probably the most powerful nation on the planet Earth because of the natural resources and the minerals that it possesses, you know. Well, we can back our currency, you know, with the minerals and, and, and the resources that are in the ground, you know, which will build a powerful economy, you know. So... Um, I, I'm on a mission, you know, I, I, I plan to start my campaign called Patriotism is a Must. And, you know, if it's God's will, I'll travel the continent and I'll meet with the politicians, with the educational ministers and, you know, um, the people who are, you know, who are necessary for me to meet and to talk to, you know, about my mission of One Africa and uh, patriotism. Great mission and great initiative. And... Uh... So I believe that this is a mission that we should all embrace. I believe that this is a mission that we should have thought about in the past 
and uh, since you've come and you are bringing out this energy, this mission, what are some of the challenges? I know that since you are in Africa, there are going to be one or two or any more challenges that you will face. And uh, what are some of the challenges that you are facing? And uh, what do you call for in terms of leadership, in terms of young people? What should we do to be able to support your mission? Well, first of all, I, I had to make some adjustments, you know, coming to Africa because, as I stated earlier, I was born and raised in the United States of America. You know, even though I'm an African, um, because uh, my ancestry is, is, you know, from Africa, I had to make the adjustments with the food, getting to, to, to learn to like fufu and banku and, you know, kinky and, and things like that. Um, one of the challenges that I see uh, first and foremost is the uh, how am I going to get the resources, the money, you know, to travel the continent to to do my mission. Um, I, I know a story of a young girl, a young Jewish girl who traveled around the world doing um, um, talks about uh, climate change. And she raised maybe 20 million dollars to do this. So um, I have to, you know, pattern myself uh, to do things of, of this nature. Um, I plan to um, to um, I plan to meet with groups and partner with groups, you know, youth groups, uh, patriotic groups, you know, uh, to discuss my mission, and um, hopefully from there we can, you know, form a, a, a viable partnership, you know, where we can be effective. Because I'm going to need help. I'm going to need assistance. I can't do this alone. So um, the spirit that I have, you know, of brotherhood and love. You know that I bring to Africa. I hope that it's re reciprocated to me, and that will make my job a lot easier. Indeed, it would. As you just had, young people, leadership. Let's come together and let's embrace this mission. Let's embrace this diversity, and let's bring everybody together, so that together we can uplift Africa. Because he's talking about one military one economy, one government. And I think this is something that uh, Kwame Nkrumah talked about. And uh, among the reasons why he was overthrown in a way, and I think that at that time we didn't see the essence of that. And now we are seeing the essence of unity. What one, uh, whether it's a country, whether it's an economy, how if they are united like USA, like China, like Russia, when there's that unity, the power that it holds, the voice that it has, I think we are now seeing. So I also call on everybody to come on board and uh, be a supporting factor to this. What are resources, what are energy, what are voices, whether you have a small podcast song where you have a small radio station or an interview that you want to do, you can let him in and uh, hear the voice, hear the sound. And maybe it may change one person at a time. I always believe in that changing one person at a time makes a difference. So let's change Africa. Let's change the narrative. Let's rise up. Let's not rise up of arms. Let's rise up to support ourselves. Let's rise up of brotherhood. And let's rise up to support Africa and uplift Africa. So this is a man on a mission. Now I want you to specifically talk about the book. And I know that you have a book project and some songs. That's wonderful that you have uh, published. And just to support and to make sure that that paths way for your mission. So maybe talk about the book and uh, the mission and the songs. And if people want to get them, how do we access those Great. stuff? Since coming to Africa, I've written a, a little booklet uh, entitled What Africa Needs. And it's in this little book that I wrote it, you know, directed toward the youth, the young people, to give them a, a sense of what we need to do in order to unite this continent and make it, you know, powerful and beneficial for all of us, you know. So uh, in the book, it, it, it says that we need to be, we need to have one government, we need to have one military, we, he, we need to have one currency. We need to have a one area code. Uh, think about this. Look how many area, area codes are on the African continent. Imagine if we united and become one, one nation. We could just use one area code. America has one area code. 
China has one area code. We need to do the same thing. So um, this is part of my, my, my vision. And like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah said uh, so eloquently that he's not an African because he was born in Africa. He's an African because Africa was born in him. So I feel strongly about that myself because I was not born physically in Africa. But, but my passion shows that because Africa was born in me, that's why I'm here. That's, that's why I gave up everything I was doing in America to come to live on this continent and to bring this, this spirit of love and brotherhood and to see how we can work together, we can unify this continent and make a, a better place and a better quality life you know, for all. Just heard it from the man himself. Let's make sure that we have one area code, one area code for development, one area code for military, one area code for economic development and empowerment, and I also add this, one area code for brotherhood, so that we see each other as one, as unique, as the world bargaining power. We see each other that, yes, if we have one area code, the world will come to us bargain. Because when we have the man, uh, human resources, we have natural resources, we are not faking it. There's gold, there's gold. If you dig down, there's gold, there's diamond, there's anything that you want that is from. Talk about oil. So why can't we have one area code and become the biggest bargaining power? so that we don't even force ourselves to develop. We have to develop organically. And that is the man, Mr. Yusuf, talking. So very soon we've come to the apex of the interview, but I would like to know, what is the way forward? From here, what, what, what are you doing? What should we be doing? What should Africa be doing? And how can people come on board? to be able to support that mission? I think the, the main focus you know, at this point is to, is to see how we can target the educational system. Because I think the educational system will be, the, will, will be a powerful um, um, tool in order to get my message out. Uh, my, booklet, my booklet, What Africa Needs, can be distributed throughout the educational system on the continent. I've, I've done two songs, a patriotic song, a, a rap song, and both songs are very patriotic in, in their content. And how, I mean, moving forward, how, how can we get those songs into the school curriculum around the con continent? I think that would be a, a great help because, again, I've noticed that the young people here are not patriotic, and proof of this is the way they're leaving, you know, the way they're running every day. You know, they, it seems like they grow up with the, with the thought that I'm growing up to go to UK. I want to go to Germany. I want to go to Spain. I want to go to the United States. So we have to stop that. We have to change that narrative. And I believe strongly that the educational system would, would be the, the vehicle, you know, that, that can transport this, this message to the children, you know, starting at a very early age, indoctrinating them. You know, we were indoctrinated through colonialism. And I, I think that we can uh, use the same methods of indoctrination to indoctrinate our children to stay in Africa, to teach them the, to love Africa, to teach them the wealth, the natural resources that are on this continent. That, and we're the only continent that can live without the other continents. We don't need, you know, things from Europe or from America or from Canada, or from China, or from Russia, you know. If they choose to come to help us with, you know, building infrastructure and roads and, and things of that nature, ports, you know, great, you know. But as far as, as far as us governing ourselves and moving forward, you know, we have everything we need. But we need to start, we need to raise up a generation of African children, you know, with um, an African-centered education, with cultural relevance. You know, this is how we can make great changes in the quality of life, you know, on this continent. It's been a beautiful day and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the mission. Thank you for taking up this initiative. Uh, but maybe one thing you forgot, the music. If you can give us some uh, freestyle or anything about the music, so that we'll just conclude with that one. Okay. Well, I've, I've written two songs and recorded two songs since being in Africa. The first one it's very patriotic. It's called Africa, Africa, Africa. And some of the lyrics in the song are Africa, Africa, Africa. We love you. We do. 
Our heart beats for you. With every step I take, I'll fight for you for God's sake. Africa, Africa, Africa. My pledge of allegiance to Africa. I pledge allegiance to Africa, home of the first civilization of mankind, the second largest continent on earth, rich with natural resources like gold, diamonds, coltan, uranium, iron ore, and much more. I will defend you from enemies, both foreign and domestic. I will fight for you. I will die for you with dignity, a clean conscience, and no malice in my heart, these things I pledge. The song is drenched with patriotism, and I believe that if this song was 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 um, was sung or pronounced every day in the schools across the African continent, you know, it would instill a great sense of patriotism in our youth. The the other song that I've written and recorded is a rap song called Mr. Yusuf. You know, it's about me coming to Africa, and some of the lyrics, you know, of the song is I'm Mr. Yusuf from the USA. I'm in Africa now, and I'm here to stay. Africa is the motherland, the first civilization known to man. You know, uh, brown skin, dark eyes, and kinky hair. When the earth was formed, we were there. Holy way, oh, oh, holy way, yeah. I'm Mr. Yusuf from the USA, in Africa now, and I'm here to stay. Africa is the motherland, first civilization known to man. Dark skin, brown eyes, and kinky hair. When the earth was formed, we were there. Want to educate you, give me some time. Want to motivate you with my rhyme. Let's celebrate, rejoice and cheer. A new day is coming, revolution is here. I'm disgusted, I'm shocked, can't believe my eyes. How Africa has been colonized. When Africa was colonized, it poisoned us and changed our mind. We look to others for salvation. Let's make Africa one strong nation. Mm -hmm. Is it true what Mr. Yusuf say? Lose your mind is the only way. Got a job to do both day and night. I'm Mr. Yusuf, I'm building minds. Make Africa great one more time. I love the children all over the world, every one of them, whether boy or girl. Be kind to others, do the right thing. Listen, listen to the truth I bring. I'm a teacher, I'm a father, I'm intelligent. One day I'll run for president. Black roster shout to Wally, want to give them a shout? Just because I'm old, don't count me out. Stand up, stand up, and conquer your fears. Elevate your mind, and no more tears. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Mr. Yusuf say. Lose your mind is the only way now. Yusuf say, lose your mind is the only way now. centuries ago, but liberation has brought me back. Meaning that we were the first people on the planet Earth. We are the original people. 
and everybody who don't look like us is just a carbon of us. So I wanted to implement that in the song to educate you know, our young people to know that it's okay to be an African, you know, because we have an image that, that, that the world sees us as not being, how can I put this? What the standard of beauty is not, that the world gives is not what an African looks like. That is not the standard of beauty, beauty that the world projects. So we have to change that narrative. We are beautiful people. We are a beautiful people. You know, so we have to learn to love ourselves. And by loving ourselves, we can grow to learn, to grow to love Africa as well. This is yet another episode of the I Am Talk cast. So you can get this on LinkedIn. You can get this on YouTube. You can get this interview. Listen to this the interview on I Am Radio, my radio station. You can also check the Apple podcast and all the podcasts that are... Uh, but then, unfortunately, on I Am Radio, you may not get to watch this. You get, just get to listen to this, and you may not see the actions. But just go on. Believe in yourself. Believe in the power that, yes, it's possible. Yes, it's possible for you. It's possible for Africa. And wherever you are, it's possible for you. Thank you for monitoring. I believe in you. See you in the next episode.